Hello guys, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to the channel here. Today we're going to be talking about what happens when you excessively load that brushless motor. Now this can happen in any sort of application. It could be your airplane, it could be your car, it could be your boat. If you are going to a uh, larger propeller in terms of your airplane, you are asking of that motor more. You're going to ask it to deliver more power than it was once delivering and that could lead to excessively loading the brushless motor. Uh, same thing with your radio control car. If you're going and increasing your gearing to a point where the motor can't handle it, uh, you're asking more of that motor, it could also lead to excessively loading that brushless motor. Now when we talk about excessively loading it, we get one thing happening. We're asking for a lot more power from that brushless motor, and then the question is, well, what does that mean in terms of the power? Well, we make power, we create power based on voltage and current. We multiply these two parameters together and we get the wattage output of the brushless motor the voltage is going to be fixed for us. We have a fixed voltage and the only thing that does change is the current. Now if we open up a brushless motor, I've opened up one here, uh, we have the stator on the outside of the brushless motor. This is known as an inrunner. If you don't know the difference, there's a video that explains inrunner and outrunner. Uh, applications. This is an inrunner. If it was an outrunner, you'd have the stator at the core of the brushless motor. So this, the stator is actually touching the outer case of the motor. So our windings are touching the outer case. And at the core of the motor, you're going to have the rotor. So we'll get to that in a second. When you go and ask of this brushless motor to have more power through it, because we know the voltage is fixed, the only thing that can change is the current that goes through the brushless motor. If we demand more power of this brushless motor, the current that flows through it are going to come from or go through these windings that are found in the brushless motor. Now when we ask for an increase in current, current is directly related to the amount of heat that can be produced in that brushless motor. This is where we start to get into all kinds of trouble. So we ask for the brushless motor to deliver more power and the direct result is more waste heat. Now that waste heat can wreak havoc on our rotor. This is where the first problem sets in. Now the rotor is a rotating shaft that spins with this center piece on it. This center piece here is known as your brushless motor magnets. So these magnets are the things that interact with the coil found on the stator of the brushless motor. Now one of the things we're talking about is heat and heat directly affects the magnets. Now these are rare earth magnets. They are very, very strong. They need to remain very, very strong in order to operate correctly. When you subject this to an excessive amount of heat, that's when they begin to fail. Over time, when you are heating them up, it doesn't take that long. It takes you know only a matter of seconds. If they get to the right temperature, you're going to start to demagnetize them. And this, you need to hit a certain threshold. So it's not going to demagnetize if you're operating within your standard operating conditions. But as soon as you go above that threshold, it's going to happen quite quickly. Where you're going to demagnetize the magnets found on the rotor. Now that begins to change some of the parameters, the electrical parameters of our brushless motor. Now this motor here is rated at 2650 kV. Uh, this brushless motor, when it gets too hot, demagnetizes those magnets found on the, on the rotor. What you're going to end up with is that KV actually increasing. So the heat destroying the magnets increases the KV of the brushless motor. Now this is going to turn into sort of a cyclic pattern. As this happening, now you're demanding more power out of that brushless motor because you're trying to turn more RPMs with the exact same load and the motor simply can't do it without demanding more power. The result that we get is more heat going through those windings because the current is going up as we know voltage is staying the same. So that means we get more heat, the magnets you know, deteriorate even further and the KV goes up again and the, you know, the pattern repeats and ultimately what we end up with is now these windings are subjected to an excessive amount of heat, one's uh, heat that they can't handle. So what begins to happen on these windings, I'll get a good shot of the windings for you, uh, they end up having the enamel coating that is on them deteriorates. Once it deteriorates, that copper is now able to touch other parts within the brushless motor, including other sets of windings. And once you have that happening, it's uh, all bets are off. You lose the functionality of the windings because everything begins to short out and the motor is essentially dead at that point. You don't have a magnet left and you don't have windings left. So at that point, you're looking for a complete rebuild of that brushless motor, or in some cases, you may as well just take the motor and throw it out and get a new one. 
Uh, so what you can do to prevent this is a couple different things. The primary way that you can prevent this is by making sure that you research the best power system for your application to understand what sort of load you should be placing on that and don't exceed that. Um, the second way and the best way to, to do this if you're trying to push the limits or if, if you're making a first run is to make sure you're doing your thermal test. Go out, run your radio control boat, plane, car and come back within a very short period of time. Measure the temperature of your three components including the motor you know, as well as the speed control and battery. Make sure those are all within specification. If it is then go ahead run a little bit more and bring it back in and check the temperatures again. Repeat this until you have uh, ran for the duration of your battery pack. Once you know what it's at, you can do use another method such as logging the temperature to make sure that during the course of when you first operate it to the end, it is still remaining within operating temperatures. This is a couple ways that you would be able to make sure that you are not overheating your brushless motors by loading them up to an excessive amount. That pretty well does it for this video. Please like the video if you do and subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in that next one.